Hi everybody, I'm Michael Goodman with Artmatcher, the mobile app connecting art lovers, artists, galleries, art fairs, and art events. While we continue to build a great experience, we'll be talking art with some of the industry's most interesting and knowledgeable people. Whether you're an art aficionado or this is all new to you, we'll be here to provide valuable insight and hilarious good stories. Hope you enjoy our chat today and check out Art Matcher in the Apple App Store and Google Play. Hello, everyone. This is Riley Clark, head of partnerships at Art Matcher. You're on the Art Matcher podcast with Michael Goodman and Tara Barone. Michael Goodman is a Los Angeles based visual artist, curator, art dealer, entrepreneur, and founder of MRG Fine Art Gallery. He's also a founding member of, of the Art Matcher team and host of the Art Matcher podcast. Tara Barone is an LA transplant from New York, uh, motivated to create a more inclusive and accessible art world. Michael and Tara, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. It's it's nice not to be in a driver's seat for once. (laughs) Also doing well. Yeah, so first things first, um, Michael, our audience might be familiar with you as a regular host, but Please, for those who don't know, tell us a bit about yourself and your career in the art world. Well, just to a quick start to it, my uh, career started at a very uh, young age. Um, so those who, who know me in the game for about 15 years, um, I started when I was 14. So a lot of people have a hard time kind of swallowing that and kind of understanding that. Um, but my uh, art career started when I essentially went to art school, or if my parents would like to think, uh, as soon as I was able to hold a crayon. But we'll start it off when I went to uh, this visual art school called LOXA, Los Angeles County School for the Arts. And uh, what made this school very special was that it was an audition-based school. And all the teachers who were pretty much college professors were teaching us high school students um about art so we had about we had academics by day and arts by night and after finishing high school there i attended san francisco art institute and meanwhile while i was doing all that because it's a pretty long story just to sum up i had a studio slash gallery that i had been running the whole time selling my own work helping my peers and it just all of that came from a necessity just trying to find a way to showcase my work um to the world um alongside my friends and um 15 years later i'm doing the same thing just on a larger scale which we'll uh get into in this segment And Tara, likewise, we'd love to learn more about you and your career in the art world. Sure. Well, this is also my second time on the podcast. So thank you for having me back. And I'll try not to repeat myself exactly. Uh, (laughs) But so like you said, I am from New York. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Um, And I didn't really know what my path was going to be, but I was always um, an artist. So I was a child, like, drawing and painting and I was always in private art classes and I took all the classes that was available at my high school. Um, When it was time to go to college, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do, but it was not an option not to go to college. And I had um, one of my high school teachers basically look at my work and say, you're really good. Maybe you should go to art school. And that really opened the door for me. Um, I ended up going to Alfred University um, in central New York, and it's a beautiful place in the middle of nowhere. And I went there so I could go to art school and continue to play volleyball because I was a volleyball player um, for most of my life as well. So I went to college so I could continue to be an athlete and an artist. And when I was in school there, I decided that I wasn't really... A producing artist or I wasn't meant to be a producing artist and I really fell in love with art history and theory and started to realize that there was a whole different part of the art world that I could be in on more of the business side and um, 
From there, I went to New York City after I graduated and was working in contemporary art galleries all over the city. And after a few different internships and jobs bouncing around Manhattan, I ended up landing at what was what is Jane Kahn Gallery on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It's on Madison Avenue and 73rd Street. She's still there. And she um, she really gave me my first big break as in a real paid job in the art world. And um, it was a small team and I was able to do a lot there. And I, you know, as a 22 year old, 23 year old, I was all of a sudden working art fairs and selling names that I had studied in college, like Picasso, Miro, Chagall, and pretty big household names. And I was selling work through her collection and running the gallery, doing a lot of daily operations. And um, I was there for the next seven years. Cut to the pandemic and New York City went, uh, well, shut down. And um, I moved out to LA about two years ago. And I've been here getting into the primary art scene and working more on the contemporary market. And um, I spent the last year at David Kordansky Gallery. I was managing there, uh, managing a small team and a huge part of the operational team at David Kordansky running the private events. So if you went to an opening in the past year, that was that was my event. <laughs> and it was really good experience um, working on the blue chip level and being in such a huge corporation. Um, But in November, I departed from that gallery and I joined Michael, um, who is a dear friend and we've known each other for a very long time. And I'm excited to to partner up with him now and the entire program that we'll talk about now. I love it. I love to hear it. Now, to turn to LA and the gallery, I'd love to learn more about this coming booth at the LA Art Show. It's a really exciting program, great curation and kind of a new layout and model as far as exhibiting at an art fair goes. Um, Michael and Tara, I'd love to learn more about it. Well, so just to give some context in the LA Art Show, uh, gosh, almost 10 years ago, that's where kind of Tara and I met, is at the LA Art Show. I uh, was doing my own kind of booth under my gallery, and she was working under Jane Cahan Gallery. And what was so, what the reason why I bring the history of it is because we were both on almost opposite spectrums of the art world. We're coming from kind of a larger gallery from New York and me kind of being a local gallery um, in Los Angeles. And it's amazing to think that that kind of the LA art show brought both of us together in that sense. So that was some of my early experiences of learning about the trade shows and what i've learned from what i know from what i was learning then to now is how inaccessible these shows were so for me to have even got into the trade show then it was a real big mission in terms of having the artists that would be appropriate for the show having the finances to make the show happen and then having the knowledge to how to operate and function within it. Um, what Tara and I are doing for the first time in, in, in the show, in the show's history really, is we're allowing a lot of artists that otherwise wouldn't have access to uh, this distribution of the art world. Um, and we're doing, we're doing so by helping them out on some of the, the things that seem they're essentially, you don't know their importance because everything feels right. I'm, I'm kind of alluding to curation and, and we're really making a difference by getting the artists involved at the beginning stage uh, and kind of guiding them on how things quote unquote should be or optimally should be to ensure success at this show and um the the fairs right now the way the the way most programs work is artists give their works to various galleries or different entities that are exhibiting 
but they really don't know the the inner workings and the mechanics of it. And we're sharing that process. Of course, not getting the artist too much in the weeds of it, but we take care of it for them and and really help them through that process, which is a huge advantage of where the market uh, we believe is going, where galleries, their roles are shifting. I, I, I will add that, you know, what we're bringing to this in terms of for the benefit of artists is that there's a lot of limitations um, in terms of participating in fairs at this level or even higher is that in order to even be represented in an arena like this, you have to be as an artist first accepted um, onto a roster of a gallery that then has to apply and then be accepted and be able to afford to go to the fair in the first place. And then usually the booths at the fair are, you know, at most 20 by 24 feet. So it's about, you know, 800 or 900 square feet and you're building walls and you're really trying to fit in, you know, five artists on six walls. And it's very limiting in terms of the amount of exposure um, that has been seen up until this point. And with our booth and this program that we are building for the first time, you know, at the LA Art Show is a much larger space with the artists in mind and also the viewers in mind enhancing the viewer experience in terms of really elevating the presentation of the artist's work and putting it in a space that can breathe and really adding a museum quality aspect to the exhibition um which is what michael's talking about in the curatorial senses so Everything we've done has been very intentional, and it's all been for the purpose of elevating the artists and how they're presented to the world, and then how the viewers and anyone who's going to the fair is going to view and receive the work, which has been very important to us. Absolutely. Well, I love it. And for anyone in our audience who doesn't know, if you could share a little about the problems of art fairs as they exist today, um, first of all, when it comes to uh, selecting artists, um, the hurdles that artists have to jump through to even get to that point. But then also when you're thinking about the experience for visitors, right? The curation, um, the kind of overwhelming nature of it. I'd love to talk about these problems that you're tackling and how you're approaching things differently with this with this booth. This is um, going back to when, when Michael was describing, you know, the first time that we met at the LA Art Show, in my memory, I recall one of our first conversations actually being ab about the problems that we both agreed on in the space of art fairs. So this has been now a 10-year kind of conversation that we've continued to have because he's done countless art fairs around the country, as have I, and they all have the same issues, which are usually, um, well, usually they're horrible to navigate, I will say that. It's usually a labyrinth of white walls, and the floor map doesn't really make a ton of sense. They're operating in these huge convention centers, and you just wind around these hallways that are kind of broken up and break off, and you end up trying to snake around, and you miss something, or you can't find the person you're looking for, and Really, it's it's difficult to navigate, and as a viewer or as someone who's paying for a ticket, you want to get everything out of that experience, and you feel like you've walked around for two hours and you still haven't seen everything. Um, so changing that aspect in terms of having a very museum-like kind of a hallway where we have just two very long... 80, 80 feet long walls um, of just straight linear feet. So anyone who's coming to our booth in particular is not going to miss anything. You just, you walk in, it's like a museum. It's a huge room that we've created within the LA Art Show, within the convention center. So we're trying to 
negate um, that hurdle in terms of you're going to see everything once you come to this booth and really trying to filter people through. And on top of the navigational problems, um, again, what I was saying where it's very limited in terms of the artists that are actually being exhibited. And usually um, galleries will go back to the same fair year after year. And that's a good thing because you're establishing a presence maybe in a different city and there's a lot of client maintenance that you can do at these fairs. So, and people will come back and look for you and build a you know, a client base. But Usually, as dealers who go to the you know the same shows in the same cities year after year after year, you see the same art, and it's kind of like you've been to one fair, you've been to them all, and it's the same galleries bringing the same artists. So that's not really helping anybody when you're just seeing the same things over and over and over again. Yeah, to add on to that, um, which kind of triggered a thought for me, I've done so many shows, and I think about. A lot of the artists myself, the reason why I had to take the same artist to various fairs is because I'm testing whether this art is good in another market, in another show. And also over the years, I've built a rapport with working with artists. And a lot of artists, they have no kind of concept of what it takes uh for a gallerist or anyone participating in the sphere to present their work. There's just, even as we were talking yesterday, Riley, about like the hanging gear, meaning where, where is an artist supposed to learn how to put on the hanging gear and how that saves the gallery time, um, in a show and this model that we're releasing this year allows artists who had been participating with us because we have this enormous space, but also brings in room for new artists to participate. And one of the lovely things that we're doing this year, uh, over 50% of the artists uh, that we have in this booth, it's, it's their first experience. And um, I think they're very fortunate that it's going to be a positive one in the sense that they don't, so many artists, they could have a negative experience with a gallery that they're not experienced in the show itself. So there's, there's gallerists who are participating in these shows and Tara and I used to laugh all the time. You can kind of tell who, which galleries it's their first time doing a show just based, uh, behind the scenes of just the demeanor and how they walk around the show and. Uh, us being kind of veterans in this show, it really gives the artists a huge advantage because they're getting to navigate it with someone with, with us where we have just, we know these, the, this show, particularly the LA art show inside and out for sure. It's, it's, it's going to be really exciting to, to see it in action. Absolutely. And here at Art Matcher, we're excited to have Art Match would be a part of this as well. For anyone who's curious, you can see the work in the show on the Art Matcher app. You can see exclusive content, you know, fo additional photos, studio shots, uh, exclusive videos with the artists, all on the Art Matcher app. And for those of you who visit the LA Art Show, you can actually see our interactive tap and learn art tags in the booth next to the works. So if you're walking past this big booth, you want to learn more, you want to stay in touch, you want to chat with Michael, you can simply tap your phone and go to the Art Matcher app to do exactly that. Um, well, fantastic. To kind of close out here, I'd love to just zoom out and talk about what this booth means for the future. You know, what it means for us here at Art Matcher, what it means for you at the gallery, what it means for the future of art fairs and for participating artists. That's really one of the most exciting parts to me is um, helping artists step their game up when it comes to working with galleries, to exhibiting fairs, and kind of taking a sense of ownership uh, over this. I think one of the one of the exciting things I'm I'm extremely excited about is 
once this is activated, this is live, it helps influence other exhibitors and artists because they see this. We live in a visual world and we've been talking about this for a while, but you really got to see it. You have to experience it. Even though we live in a digital world now, I think the digital, these different tools, much like Art Match, are helping enhance the experience of when you when you do come um, to these to, to this activation, to this um, it's a show within a show um, experience. And I'm looking forward uh, for that kind of ripple effect. And it happens a lot in the art world. We didn't learn what we know just by accident. It it's been years of attending, seeing different things that are working. And we took everything that works in, in different parts of the art world and have put it all together into this one experience. So I'm excited. Hopefully this, this influences new exhibitors, maybe sometimes old time exhibitors. They need that kind of fire lit underneath them. Uh, cause the art, the art world, uh, does tend to get a little bit stale and we're definitely looking to, uh, mix it up. Yeah. We love to mix it up. Now, can you share with the art matcher audience where they can find more about the galleries program, uh, what information they should know about the LA art show so they know to s what to see and where to see it. Well, we will be uploading, uh, under the MRG and the art matcher app, uh, the whole all the works that will be in the show. Absolutely. And for those of you who attend the fair, you should check out uh, MRG Fine Arts booth and you should interact with our art tags. Tap the phone, get information about the artist, get information about the gallery, watch exclusive content videos with the artists, save it for later, message back and forth, and join our community platform. Michael and Tara, thank you again so much for your time. We're really looking forward to this show. Likewise. Thank you, Riley. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning into the Art Matcher podcast. We had an interesting discussion, a great time, and we hope you did too. Please tune in for next week's episode and like, share, and follow. For more information about the app, you can check out our website at artmatcher.com or look us up on social. Stay safe and be artful.